Excellent. Okay. So yeah, we're all here. Did you all have a good week? Yeah. All right. Did you get a chance to practice? I and did. Yay. Yeah, it was good. I, um, cause remember how I asked you about, you know, what could I could do to set up the mat? So I put a bunch of blankets down and I had my partner get down on the floor and it's, it's definitely a different um, feel working on the mat and trying to figure out how to position your body and stuff. So, but I tried it. It was good. And he seemed to get relief from things. He definitely could feel where I was working and some of the points and stuff. So that was good. Excellent. And thanks for sharing that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's really good. Um, and today we're going to do more of that practicing if you have somebody with you today you know i do today great i just gotta grab him <laughs> and what you said about you know getting used to your using your body on the mat we're going to focus a lot on that today too oh, good. to help us get comfortable help our bodies get comfortable working on the mat no. anybody else have anything they wanted to share from the past week, anybody else get to practice? Unfortunately, no, okay. <laughs> just a teeny bit. Um, but my husband's schedule is is crazy during the summer. So hopefully over the weekend, I'll be able to get in some practice. Excellent. With him, yeah. Yep. Does anybody else have a, a live person to practice on today I'm, during I'm class? I might have some. my dad, but I don't know if he's today, if he's going to be willing to be in this. <laughs> no. well, yeah, I, hope. With him. <laughs> I hope so. And, and if, I he, hope so too. if he can't, then you can use pillows and rolled up towels and we'll make, I'll show you how to make a person to practice <laughs> on <laughs> using blankets, pillows, you can do it. I've done it lots of times. <laughs> All right. So is everybody ready to go ahead today? We can, we can start with a meditation. Um, I'll start to screen share. There we go. So just showing you preparation before giving shiatsu and you can see be mindful focus on your breathing visualization of what you how you would like things to go and what you feel you should focus on that time and then if you come down here you can see the kikai okay so the x just below the dot, so the dot in the center there represents your belly button. And then the X re represents the kikai or the ocean of ki and our center of gravity. So um, we'll do our meditation. Hang on one second. So you want to be you also can pin your screen so that um, you have me and the slide side by side, if you like. And I'm just gonna time our meditation. So we're just, today we're gonna do three minutes. We're building, we started with one minute the first day, two the second, and three minutes today. And I'll, I'll um, ring my bowl and that'll be the start. And then um, you'll hear chimes at the end. And you can just focus, you can pl place your hands just below your navel, over your kikai. And 
Breathe and relax. Breathe fully all the way down to your kikai so that you can feel your belly moving, filling and emptying as you breathe. Breathe at your own pace. Inhaling fully. And exhaling fully. Feel free to adjust your posture whenever you need to, always taking care that you're comfortable. Uh, that was very nice for me. I hope you enjoyed. I'm a sip of water. Mm. All right. Yeah, I had a busy morning. I don't know what your morning was like, but it was nice to relax and center ourselves. So today uh, we're going to cover um, an overview, a quick overview of the five elements that, and especially what the elements we've already traveled through. And today our focus is the fire element and introduce you to the concept of absolute and supplemental fire as well. And then we'll do um, Shikoki exercises and makoho, and then we'll actually treat the heart and small intestine meridians after I uh, demonstrate their location. Yeah, so we want to go to the five elements. Just have to. There we go. Yeah, we've briefly discussed the five elements and I just wanna share how important they've been for me. Um, they've been so helpful 
the five element theory is just makes things simple. <laughs> it helps a lot <laughs> with all that you're learning now or have already learned and what I have. It, it just takes the 10,000 things of the universe that we're dealing with every day, every minute, and it distills them down to just each thing can be related to one of these five elements. So um, it's, it's so helpful to me uh, working with clients and understanding nature and myself and balancing my life. The five elements, is, it helps me every day. Um, you can see the definition again up here and you can see it in relationship to the seasons. So this is showing you how each season relates to the elements, but also we can go to this, this diagram where it also shows each of the meridians in relationship to an element. And you see that heart and small intestine are part of the fire element. And this is the only element that has four meridians. It also has heart constrictor and triple heater. We'll go into those in class number five. And there are actually two parts to fire element. Um, heart constrictor and triple heater happen later in the cycle. Heart and small intestine come first in the daily cycle. And we can move to that. We can move to the daily cycle. Um, let me show you that. So this is how it relates to the elements. We saw that and then the meridians. And then if we wanna see, we can go to palpation and location of the yin and yang meridians. And we can see how the key flows through our bodies in relationship to the meridians and the elements. So we started with lung and lung is where the whole, this is where the key begins. And it actually relates to a certain particular time of day. So the lung meridian relates to three to five in the morning. So the very early morning and we can travel, we can follow, you can follow along with me. You can trace it, the meridian pathway as it travels. Let me just see. Yeah, yeah, actually this is where we would like to start with two cameras if we can. So we'll restart here. I'll, I'll go through this with Sam. We'll have Sam join us with his camera. Yeah, if you can. So we'll trace the meridians that we've already gone through. The, the four meridians that we've already gone through and then I'll add the heart and small intestine showing you in each of them. And then I should mute my sound in the, in the computer while we do that as well. I can, I have to do that here. Here. There, okay. All right. So you're being yourself, right? And I'm gonna show them lung meridian. So we're starting with lung meridian right here, just below the clavicle. And we can trace the energy as it just flows out all the way to the base of the nail on the thumb. We'll do it on the other side as well. And then from there, 
it travels into large intestine, which is from five to seven in the morning. Yang meridian. We're just a little bit slow. Okay, I'm gonna slow down and you can be following along on your body. So large intestine is traveling, We're just reviewing. So large intestine ends here and then stomach begins right here. So it's here and also in the side where the side and the front meet in the face, comes down through the neck and through the nipples and then comes in and back out like an hourglass and through where the anterior and lateral legs meet in the thighs and then just outside the bone in the front of the shins and through the feet between the second and third bones out to the end of the second toe at the base of the nail. So that's, and then we go to spleen. So it flows from stomach into spleen. Spleen is from nine to 11, the time of day. And it comes up just behind the bone in the calves, just medial to the patella at the knee and up where the anterior and medial meet in the thighs. And then outside the breast to the anterior axilla and down onto the side of the ribs is where spleen ends. So those are the four meridians that we've already done and spleen finishes at 11 and then the energy goes to heart. So it starts right in the hollow of the axilla and comes out to the elbow. And I'm just giving you a general idea of where it's going. Okay, and then out to the wrist on the little finger side, and then between the little finger and the ring finger and the palm, and out to the base of the nail on the little finger. And the same on the other side. Am I going slow enough, Sam? Okay. So, sorry, Wendy. And the axilla. Wendy? Between sorry. the bone here and the end of the crease at the elbow and then out here and to this side of the nail. So that's heart and it flows from heart into small intestine from one to three. So coming along the little finger on the outside and right up against the bone here and between the point of the elbow and the bone on the inside, and then from there to the back of the axilla and up to the joint. It continues on, but we're gonna focus. It continues into the scapula and through the shoulders and the neck and under the jaw to the ears, but we're gonna focus on the arms today primarily. So the, those are the two meridians we're going to focus in on today as heart and small intestine. So we just follow the pathway that key flows through the body each day. And um, we talked also about how the five elements relate to each of the meridian pathways. Um, we're ready to move on and back to just a little bit about the five elements again. Just when we talked about fire and I said there was absolute and supplemental fire. So um, absolute fire being the heart and the small intestine and supplemental being heart constrictor and triple heater. 
just a way to think about that is that absolute fire is the actual flames of the fire. Okay, and supplemental fire is more like the coals, but it's also very important. The coals help sustain the actual flames of the fire. Okay, so that's our little introduction to um, where we're going today. Anybody have any questions at this point before we start doing the Mako hole? See if I can get back to where I can see the chat too. But feel free to speak up. You can unmute yourself at any time. I'm gonna Wendy, stop Wendy. my screen share for a minute. There we are. Oh, Wendy. Maybe I should also unmute myself for a minute. <laughs> Wendy, can you hear me? Wendy, are you not hearing Yumi? Oh, I don't yeah. know. Can you hear me, Wendy? Yes. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, so I don't know if it was just my side, but um, because of the share, the screen was shared, um, you know, your, I could not pin you. So, um, you know, the, your um, uh, meridian tracing was small, um, you know, screen. So I don't know if it was just me. Anybody else could pin her? I was having the same problem every time I tried to pin. It just says chat. I can't okay. pin anybody. Yeah, I think you need to stop share screen. Yeah. Uh, then we can pin you. So okay. when you do like a, a demonstration, if you can uh, unscreen. <laughs> mine actually, yeah, Thank mine you. actually still just only says chat when I try to pin someone. So I don't know. Maybe it's, it could be me. I'm not, I'm not the best with technology. Right, so. right now, um, I have the gallery view, so I can see everybody. But Yumi, you brought up the same point last time. Thank you for being Yeah, I don't know what. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I should stop my screen share before I go to the camera. Yeah, but this uh, thing is, even now, is there something wrong? I don't know. I can't pin. Yeah, right? Yeah, I can't pin now either. Yeah, is can everybody pin? Usually, if you click on the upper right corner, the yeah, three dots. Let me see here if I can figure that out. It's strange. Usually, that three dots up at the upper right corner has the option for pin. But I have me. speaker, gallery, full screen on mine. Yeah, it's it's strange today. I'm so sorry. I Just put, wanted to, could uh, I put it on speaker? Does that help you? Uh, right now it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so, so I have to put uh, it on speaker. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. <laughs> when I go to use the camera, when we go to use two cameras, I need to put it on speaker, and then I need to um, mute myself. That's what I, that's what I have to do, and and I have to stop the screen share. Yeah. Okay. So I think we got that. And hopefully I'll remember. <laughs> okay, so we're ready to go ahead with the Makoho exercises, which I'll need to screen share again for. So go back here. There we go. So we already did. So today I'm going to go quickly through the ones we already did. We already did the fall season, the stretch for lung and large intestine. And I will do those again today. But um, I'm also going to do stomach. Earth. Here we go. Stomach and spleen meridians and earth, we did that last time, along with lung and large intestine or metal element. And then today we're gonna add summer season and stretching heart. We just put a T there and small intestine meridians. 
And this is Pamela. And you will notice when I do it that Pamela is much more flexible <laughs> than I am. Um, my knees never, I don't think, maybe, maybe when I'm doing the very most yoga every day, my knees might get down where families are. So don't worry <laughs> if you're not there today. Just go to a comfortable stretch for you when you do this. And then you can see Kumiko from the side doing the same stretch. Okay. I'm gonna just um, stop my share. I think I have to actually mute myself here. And Sam, yeah, you're going to be on. So if I'm muting. You think I can just mute myself there? I'll try that. I don't know if this is going to work. Sam thinks I can just mute myself here, but we'll see. Here. Wendy, Wendy, I can pin, I can pin both Sam and you. Don't worry about it. I think she's on mute. But I think she can hear from Sam's uh, speaker. Oh. Everybody, can you see the two screens? Right side, Sam, left side, Wendy. No. Uh, yeah, I see. I have to go here. Jennifer, there's a three dots. On which one? Right corner of each screen. Yep. Yeah. Yes? Oh, now I got it. Okay, great. And then you can, if you want to watch Wendy, uh, move the castle. Thank you for fixing that. Awesome. Right. I got it now. You got it? Okay, good. Okay. Okay. So you gonna... we're going to start out with long. So uh, you want to stand with your feet hip uh, width apart. Everybody ready? I want you to follow along with me. Okay. Yes, everybody's standing. We are ready, Wendy. Thank you. Okay. And then you can bring your hands behind your back and interlace your thumbs and stretch your index fingers down towards the mat. And inhale and bring your head back. And then exhale forward, breathing out. And stay in that position and take at least three full inhalations and exhalations. And then slowly come back up on an inhalation. And switch your thumbs, stretch your index fingers down again, bring your head back, and then come forward. Exhale. And come back up. Release. Rotate your shoulders. You can go to the the whole foot, stomach and spleen. So you can sit and inhale back. I'm going to turn that off. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my phone was on for the chimes. Bring one arm back and then the other arm back. 
And then you can lower yourself onto one elbow and the other elbow. And come all the way down. And breathe and relax. And you're stretching your earth element, your stomach, and your spleen, and you can feel it. And then slowly coming out back to the elbows, back to the hands, coming forward into the child pose. And you can use your fists outside your spine, up and down your back. And slowly come up, and now we'll go into our new maca hole for today, which is for absolute fire. So bringing your feet together in front of you, and then grasp, grasp your fingers underneath your feet. Bring your knees down towards the mat and take a nice deep breath and bring your elbows down towards the mat and your back, your hara towards the mat. Exhaling. And then slowly inhaling back up. So yeah, breathe in and out when you're in your stretch position. You want to take at least five breaths if you can in the stretch position. And then come back up. And we've done the three maca hole. There are two more we're going to add in subsequent classes. Also, I want to do for um, one of the um, kata, the shiatsu kata movements. You want to unmute there? No, because I'm going to oh, okay. unmute there because I'm going to demonstrate more on the mat. Um, this one, I'll take my glasses off. So, what I want to do now is just get comfortable on all four limbs. So the hands, the knees on the mat. And we're gonna move from our hara. So bringing your hara towards your left hand and then backing away. And just noticing the depth that you go into the mat or the floor. So now, so we did the left hand, now let's come to the right knee. So bringing your heart towards your right knee and then back to the center. And then the right hand, bring your heart towards your right hand and then back towards the center and then into the left knee and back to the center. So just try that, relax and move your hara towards each, so towards your knees, your hands, and just feel that that's how you can bring your depth to your partner. So there's no effort, just relax and let your hara move towards each of those areas and back to the center. So that's something you can practice at home just to get yourself nice and comfortable and working on the mat. So 
So um, I want to go from here to um, slides again. Now let's unmute. And I'm going to go back to screen sharing. I got it. Okay. So we share, and we're going to move to the end meridians in the arm. and the heart meridian. So you see, you have um, very nice, clear drawings that help you. And then here it talks about the heart meridian and subo locations. So we did trace it briefly, but now we'll go into it in a little more detail, the heart meridian and the subo locations. So yeah, there are nine Subos on the heart meridian. Um, it's more posterior. And it deals with interpretation. So here you can see the meridian. I'm going to expand it. There we go. So, yeah, let's trace the meridian. Since these are just in the arms, I think we can do it without two cameras. Um, so if we start right in the heart of the axilla, the softest spot in the heart of the axilla, and then you come out towards the elbow, and you want to come between the end of the crease and this epicondyle here, this bone right here. So that's heart number three. And then you come out this way in a straight line to the crease at the wrist. So on the little finger side of the crease at the wrist and then up between the bones of the little finger and the ring finger and out to the nail, base of the nail on the ring finger side of the little finger. So that's your heart meridian. And it's very nicely detailed here and all the nine points. And then we wanna focus in on heart number seven, Shinmon, gate of God. And I just wanna ask a question. Let me just see. Um, Yumi or Kumiko, um, Shinmon, does it also have anything to do with mind door? I don't know if you can talk now or not. I didn't mute anybody. But anyway, we'll talk about that point. Evan? Yes. Yeah, so um, yeah, the name Shinmon, Shin is Shen, you know, the heart. Uh, houses the shen that shen you yes. know the, the yes spirit uh mind consciousness and so there's the uh shen gate okay so spirit gate yeah so i i bet it has to do okay. with mind yeah okay spirit gate thank you yeah, spirit gate or yeah. shen so, so i've also heard it called mind door <laughs> yeah so in uh chinese medicine the shen yeah. uh is you know uh, like a four things so there are actually more than uh, mind spirit consciousness and uh uh heart itself right emotional so yeah all that mind and emotional things are called the shen and it's the gate of the shen yep. and this is the point <laughs> the mind door okay so yeah gate of god shen gate and um, mind door, it could be all of those. So Shinmon. And then um, 
So that's the point right there. It's between the radius, the bone here on the little finger side of the wrist and the bones of the hand, the carpal bones. You can feel an opening in between those two there. Okay, and that is heart number seven. And you can see what it's helpful for. So if somebody has a sore wrist or epilepsy or dizziness, insomnia, hysteria, hysteria anxiety, I don't know, I think most people have anxiety at some point <laughs> in their life. And then also for heart disorders. Okay. So it's a very useful point. Yeah, and it gives you more, um, well, actually they're the same indications down here where it's showing it again. All right, so then we wanna go to um, the young meridians in the arms. So you can see the small intestine. All right, so the heart finishes here on the little finger and then the small intestine starts just at the other side. The energy flows internally to the other side of the little finger and then travels and it's a yang meridian, travels in the opposite direction. Okay, so the small intestine has 19 points and it's also posterior and it deals with absorption and assimilation and that's absorption and assimilation on all levels, mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical. And we'll go over the meridian and then we'll come back to the major subo. We'll focus in on small intestine three when we come back, but I'm gonna go scroll down and show you the meridian. So that's the whole meridian. We're gonna start at the little finger and come along the little finger on the outside and right behind, just up under the bone here, the fifth the carpals and down to the wrist. And then we're coming right in here. To the elbow between the epicondyle and the epicondyle here. And then back, I'll come this way. Back to all the way up to the back of the axilla and to the joint. And from the joint, you can see it goes through, but we're, we're going to just treat it to this point today. You can see it goes through the scapula here and up through the neck. And then just under the cheekbone and out to the ear. But today we're going to focus on the arm. So let's come back up and see the point. Go okay. We groove. Did I pronounce it correctly? Kumiko or Yes, go okay. Okay, rear groove. And that's small intestine number three. So it's on the hand between, it's right out here. You can see it, Let's, let me show it to you here first, right here, okay? So, It's at the, just below the joint at the base of the little finger. And right under that bone, 
and it's helpful for deafness, tinnitus, headache, sore throat, paralysis of the upper extremities or hands, and it calms the spirit and treats epilepsy. Also clears heat and benefits the sensory orifices. So you can see it right there. Okay, so those are the meridians we're gonna be treating today. Um, we'll do that with Bolo and we could take just a few minutes break while we get Bolo in here. So I'll just stop um, screen sharing and I'm gonna, I can just uh, mute. Okay. Right. I think Wendy stepped out to find Bora. So everybody's okay. Are you managing the screen well by using the cursor? Let's see if we got rid of you. I'm just gonna check here to make sure So if somebody um well Olo is back, so if you can come back, if you can hear me, great. Yes, we can hear you, Wendy. Just waiting for um, Christina and Jennifer. Now, Jen, I think you have somebody to work on. Great. Yep. So I want to let you get just, a chance to get your I just grabbed him. partner set up, <laughs> Jen. Good job, Jen. Unfortunately, I took my mat apart, so I'm just going to work on my table today, Wendy. Okay. Yeah, do what works best for you. Ambria, your father is coming. All right. <laughs> Can you turn up your sound? I can't turn it okay. up. Okay. 
Sorry. So Jen, just let me know when you're ready. And it looks like somebody else has. Is it Embria? Yeah, great. Embria's dad. Thank you. Thank you, those of you who are helping out by letting us practice with you. I'm ready when you're in Buffalo. So Jen looks like she's all set. Henry, are you all set? Just give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Let me start at this time. Okay, you comfortable? Do you need anything? No. Okay, good. So yeah, we first want to take time to make sure that um, our receiver is comfortable. And then we also want to make sure that we're comfortable and take a moment to relax and center ourselves. And then we can come to the Hara and bring our Hara to their Hara. So as they exhale, may feel invited in. And just see how deep you feel invited in with each exhale. And when they inhale, you might want to lighten up a little bit. Allow space for their breath. And you can place one hand over the other. And pay attention to what you feel. How's the pressure going? Okay. And then coming up right along the center line. Into the shoulder. And we begin to bend the elbow. And then gently bring the arm up off the mat and shake it and come alongside your partner. Now, I need an extra pillow here. How's that? Okay. Go Bolo's arm. So, Calming. So I'm holding just my fingers wrapping around his shoulders, my palm over approximately lung, and then my thumb is on the center of the axilla. And then I'm using palm pressure along the heart meridian, but Carola Beresford Cook taught us to let the heart meridian massage you. So we don't go in too deep or too fast. I can feel a pulse in the center of the axilla. So paying attention to what you sense and feel. I'm traveling towards the elbow, aiming to come between this epicondyle here and the end of the crease. And bringing your hara to your hand as you go. And then when you get to the other side of the elbow, you can continue right along here. How's the pressure? Good. All right. And we can Treat Shin Mon right here on the crease at the wrist. 
on the little finger side, and then continue between the bones of the little finger and the ring finger, and come all the way out to the base of the nail on the ring finger side of the little finger. So that's your heart meridian. And then you can actually treat small intestine meridian starting right here. So along, we're coming in the opposite direction. It's a young meridian. And you can come right along here, right along to the bone of the little finger. And you can stop and treat heart number three. And then we're coming a little posterior to where we were when we were treating heart. More posterior. You can actually see the meridian between my fingers. You can see that groove. Meridian of the small intestine. And then we're coming right between this epicondyle and the olecranon. And you can palm all the way up the most posterior portion. Most posterior portion of small intestine. It's coming right up to the joint and it's going to actually go underneath. Can go under here. But we'll, we'll treat that area when we get to the sideline. Come above your partner and give a gentle stretch. Is that one? Okay. Mm -hmm. Bring that arm down. Transition to the other arm. I'm going to move the pillow again. So again, starting right in the deepest hollow of the axilla. And then palming along the heart meridian. And I can strongly feel the pulse. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm coming to right here between the end of the crease and the epicondyle, and my palm pressure coming from my hara. My hara is coming towards my hand, but again, I'm being very gentle, letting his meridian massage me. And we can hear the key flowing. I'm coming to part number seven, right here at the crease in the wrist between the bones, between the bones of the forearm and the hand on the crease at the little finger side. And then we can continue between the bones of 
the ring and middle fingers all the way out to the base of the nail on the little finger. And then from there, we're gonna go to small intestine. So small intestine is on the outside at the base of the nail of the little finger. And then we're coming to small intestine three below the joint at the base of the little finger. A hole there in the palm along the pathway of the meridian. I'm coming more posterior. Right on the bone and between the bone and the muscle. Coming to between the epicondyle and the olecranon here right between the bones. We always want to remember that between the bones and the muscles. And then coming up, more posterior still. So I'm really right under, all the way back to the back of the axilla. And then the meridian goes under to the scapula and then up to the neck. We're just working in the arms today. And give a little stretch to both arms. Retreat into close back at the heart. And let your partner lift you out of their hara as they breathe in. Your hands will rise and just don't sink back in. With each breath, let them lift you. So that they bring the treatment to a close. And thank your partner for letting you practice on you. Okay, I'm unmuted. How was that, Yumi? Was that better? Was the screen share? Okay, good. How did it go um, practicing along with me, Jennifer? Okay? Yeah, it was, yeah, good. It was good. All right, was my speed slow enough? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. And Yumi, who was it? It was Ambria also was practicing, let me see. How did it go, Ambria? It was good. It was good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How does how does your dad feel? Yeah, he he likes getting shiatsu. Great. And Jen, 
Can we, can we ask? <laughs> yeah, Michael, Michael enjoys it too. So when I, um, I don't know, it wasn't last night, but the night before I had done all the other meridians that we, so kind of like a mini treatment, right? Cause didn't have all of them, but so I did all of those and uh, yeah, he was very relaxed afterwards and felt really good. So he said that was not quite as relaxing because it was a little bit quicker. And of course I'm like jumbling around trying to figure out what I'm doing, but yeah, no, he enjoys it too. Okay. Yes. Well, yeah, you can slow it down, you know, to the speed that works for you now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paul, can you hear us? Yeah. How was it? It was very good. Thank you. Anything you want to share about what you felt? I feel very relaxed and I feel it was helpful. Paul wasn't feeling good before. Mm -hmm. um, you want to say anything about what was going on? Uh, something wrong with my stomach, and I feel better now. Yeah, he wasn't feeling well this morning, so I'm really happy that we could have a demonstration and he could benefit. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what I was thinking we could do now, it's 12.10. Why don't we take a 15-minute break and come back at 12.10? 25 so yep and then uh we'll we'll start again with um practicing and taking questions anything that um anybody needs okay all right Good. see you then thank you yeah thank you thank you yes Okay, great. So, you, Jen, you still have your partner available when you're when we're ready. Okay, and and Ambria. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I was off mute. Yeah, he's relaxing. Oh, he's part. ready. <laughs> okay, great. And Bolo is too. But before I start. Um, you know, with live people, I'm gonna show you how we can do it with um, pillows. So we'll just go to, um, here, let's see. I've got a little setup here. And then we'll also, I'll, I'll mute and I'll go on, um, I have to go here. All right, so you can pin, you can pin me here if you like, and then Sam also has, great, so this is my little setup here, you can see, um, so this is the hara, this is the spine, this is the head, and then this is the arm, all right, so, and then so if you're working on a different limb, you can move this over here. Or if you're working on a leg, you can move it here. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's, it's pretty workable. You can get a pretty good idea for practice. And um, I was thinking if you would like to practice all of, we have plenty of time today. So we didn't really get to practice um, the other two times and we have plenty of time. So I was thinking we could practice all of the meridians. You can, you can go through them um, at your own pace and I can give you feedback and answer questions and demonstrate anything you need me to demonstrate. And um, we can call Bolo back in too. So I want to give you time to get set up to practice. So just checking to see who's yep. talking. You can check the chat too. Wendy. Okay. How does the setup look to you? Do you see both? this screen 
and yours? No. I just you just see what you're filming. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's I'm not, best. I'm not trying to figure yep. that out. Yep, and I see both here, so that's Hurt good. My brain too much. Yep. All right, Wendy. You're muted. Okay. Can you hear me? So maybe you could unmute. Yep. So I just want to check: is everybody ready to practice? Uh, Wendy Jennifer had a question. Right. Can you hear me, Wendy? Can't hear me. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> I don't think Wendy can hear me. Can you hear oh, me? Oh, I hear you. Oh, you I hear you. Okay. It's faint though, so just speak up. Okay. Um, I was just wondering: is there a certain order to the meridians? Are you Are you going to talk about that? Am I getting ahead of myself? No. So you don't have to always practice them in the same order. Um, but you learn them in the order that the energy travels through the body during the day. So during the early morning hours, three to five, lung predominates, and then five to seven, large intestine and is predominating. And then it moves from large intestine to stomach, from uh, seven to nine, and into spleen from nine to 11. So it's flowing predominantly, it's flowing everywhere all the time, but it's predominating in those areas in those times. So spleen is nine to 11, and then we come to fire, um, what we're addressing today. So we have, we have first heart from 11 to one, and then small intestine from one to three. So that's the order that it flows through our body, that the key flows through our body where it predominates at different times of the day. So that's one order, but you know, you could also, depending on what's going on with your partner and there are so many aspects to the five elements, you know, you could have a myriad different combinations and orders, <laughs> depending on who you're treating, what's going on with them. But yeah, that's what we can focus on, if you like, today. We could start with lung and large intestine and feel free to look at your notes or um, your manual and I can watch you and I can answer questions at any point. And I can demonstrate things if anybody has questions. Looks good. I see you getting ready there, Christina. Bree, are you okay? Can you um, practice? All right, great. Looks like everybody's ready then. All right. So go ahead and um, you can start with long and anytime you need help, just let me know. And I'll observe, and if I see something that I think I can help with, I'll let you know. I'll get Bolo back too, so if he needs, he needs more work. <laughs> Bolo, you wanna come back? He thinks he ate something wrong. So, uh, what was it? What was it that you had? What right. you ate? A scone. A scone. <laughs> I'm never going to eat, eat scones in my life anymore. <laughs> Are you serious? Well, did you? you. <laughs> it's that bad. Bad. <sighs> So looks like everybody's ready and it looks like Jen is practicing. 
So you can go right ahead and practice and I'll listen for you. If, if anybody speaks up, feel free to speak up and let us know if you have any questions. Jen. Jen and Bree, do you is it possible to adjust your camera so I can see where you're actually practicing? And um, Christina too, just a little bit better. Yeah, so if I can see what you what you're doing, that would be helpful. Just as much as possible. Yeah. That looks great. Thank you. Big difference. So yeah, we have different positions for different meridians. You put the arm in position that feels most comfortable to treat that meridian. And it depends on your partner and yourself. But yeah, for long, usually it's down and with the palm up. You want me to move the computer closer to you while you're here so that you can see what, you what others are doing? No, I think I'm going to have to keep it where it is so that they can see from more than one angle. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wendy? Yes? I have a question. Okay. So when you're working on the table and you're trying to do lung, how do you position the arm? Because it like, you know, you want to, I feel like I need three arms or three hands, <laughs> one to hold his wrist and then the other two to work. Okay. So um, you can, are you okay? You can put his arm in a little closer. closer. Does All right. that help? Closer to the body. Yeah, probably. Yep. Okay, thank you. Move over to the side of the table. Well, yes, also have him move over to one side of the table if you need oh, to. Yeah, that's what he did earlier. Okay. Yep. He did that in Yeah, you want to have enough space good, for his arm. Partner. <laughs> thank you. Could you hear my answer, Jen? Yes, she did. Yep, I did. Great. <laughs> good, thank you. Wendy, could you talk about mother hand? And messenger. Mother and messenger? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can talk about it in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
Nahara. We can have a mother hand that is stationary and the messenger hand that is traveling. And the, the mother hand can be listening and the messenger hand is exploring. So when he inhales, I lighten up. And when he exhales, exhales I lean in from my heart. heart. Into both hands. And the messenger is traveling. And that way, also, if by chance I go in too deep, my mother hand will notice right away. Because it's stationary. It's like the control in an experiment. And the messenger hand is the variable. So you can translate that also when you're in the meridian. So my thumb here, I have a mother thumb on lung one, which is just below the clavicle and medial to the coracoid process and lateral to the ribs. And then my messenger hand, palm is palming the pathway just lateral to the biceps. Close the pressure below. Good. And it's my hara that's coming towards my hand as I lean into the messenger. Um, I'm also leaning into my thumb. And I'm traveling all the way out the long meridian to the thumb through the phenar eminence. So yeah, this is my messenger and my mother thumb is listening at lung one as I travel out through the meridian. And I can do it with palm or with thumb. I can have a messenger thumb. And I can treat points along the way. Lung number five, right at the crease at the elbow. On number nine at the wrist. And we observe a little bit. You take your time and feel free to look at your notes anytime and ask questions. Wendy, I had a question. Christina? I, I was wondering when you are... Hang on, I have to get close to Sam to hear you. What were you wondering? When you're moving along the meridian, are you also trying to bring your hara closer to the meridian at the same time? Yeah, so... Yeah, you don't, you don't want to get too, your hara should always be facing the area that you're working on. So you can just easily lean from your hara to that area that you're making contact with. So I'm, my hara is in between my thumb and my palm. And it's coming towards both of them. And I can go back and forth. Let me see how you guys are doing. Your questions are getting answered. Christina, was that helpful? Yeah, I, I was also just wondering, like, physically, are you bringing this part of your stomach closer to the person's yes. body. 
Yes, and just let me see. Let me just see what I'm going to look at you too. So I don't know if you can let me see your hands a little bit. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you lean in with your hara towards, you want it to be in between the two hands and you can lean from one to the other. You see us, Kumiko and I are both <laughs> moving around in circles <laughs> from one hand to the other. So our hands are supporting us, but our hara is coming to our hands and we can lean from one to the other. Oh, and you're working on your cat now. You. <laughs> That's great. So how, oh, yep. Yeah. Make sure your wrists are comfortable all the time. Yeah, if anything feels like it's overstretching your wrists, adjust your hands so that it's comfortable for you. So uh, Brie, you can move, you can have a mother and a messenger. So Brie. I, yeah, I just had a question. When you, are you typically kind of transitioning from both um, more sitting on your heels to all fours. It just depends on yeah, how I go back and forth. Yeah, yeah, depending on. So so let's see if you can see. Let me put this down a little bit. Too. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Sam's got me. So Right now, I've got my toes down. So you can see my feet, right? Yes. And then I can also, depending on where I am, I can be more on my knees, my feet relax more. But it's good to stretch your toes too. <laughs> so I do both. <laughs> And again, I'm using the mother and the messenger as much as possible. How are you doing, Christina? I'm just taking uh, it all in. I'm, I'm, I'm coming over to Sam. She's just taking it all in. Okay. So well, we did long, we'll try. Uh, and you don't have to be on the same meridian as me either, but you can. So we did long and we also want to, you okay? Yes, yeah, <laughs> Treat large intestine. No. So I can be working along here and holding at large intestine four and traveling along the pathway towards the elbow. And then above the elbow, I'm coming right through um, the lateral, the most lateral portion of the arm. So the meridian is traveling along the index finger through large intestine four, out to the end of the crease at the elbow, and then up the most lateral portion.
And we're just treating large intestine up to the top of the shoulder. Just checking in with you. Seeing how it's going for you. So did you feel like you could try large intestine with the um, rolled up towel <laughs> or blanket? I honestly, it's, it's a little difficult for me. So I think what will be helpful is to rewatch the recording. Yep. And, and just practice along with that with a partner, you know, when and I That's know. fine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're all, you know, we, we have beginner mind, right? Allow yourself, you know, be compassionate with yourself. And it's helpful just getting comfortable with the movement on all fours and, you know, on the mat. And... Uh. So we can also try um, stomach. Oh, did somebody have a question? So I think it'll be, um... I would like to practice with a person, but I, I did get this like really nice feeling that it feels good to be in this position actually. It's like an exercise for myself. So yes. that was nice to realize. Yeah, it's, it's even nice to practice on the pillows and the blankets a little bit, you know, so that when you do have a person to practice on, you'll feel more comfortable and, you know, yeah, get used to your body moving. And then when you're with the person, you'll also have the additional, you want to be making sure you're not going in too deep for them. So, yeah. So that way, at least you can get used to how your body moves through the different meridians one way and then practice the other way as well. So both, both work. <laughs> They're both going to help you. I just have a question. Are there any taboos about like, uh, you know, crossing over one side of the body or another, are we supposed to be doing that in some sort of sequence or do you just kind of move? So you that? don't have to use the same sequence all the time. I actually think I, I do teach sequences and there are sequences, you know, that I've shown you already and sequences that um, Kumiko has recordings as part of your manual but you don't wanna to be tied to only ever being able to do it one way because you're gonna have different people who have different needs at different times. So, and also it's better for your brain to be flexible. So yeah, you okay. don't, I, don't want you to, I don't want you to be strictly tied to only one way. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So we can go ahead. Um, and do stomach, try leg. So stomach meridian is traveling where the anterior and lateral meet, right down this way through the leg, just lateral to the patella and just lateral to the bone, across the top of the foot to the second toe. And when you're actually in the, the pathway, So my mother hand is stationary here. I'm palming and moving back and forth between my mother and my messenger. Coming lateral to the patella. 
And then I can bring my mother hand down to stomach 36. I can have a mother thumb here. So it's four fingers below the patella, just lateral to the bone. And I could use a palm or thumb. And the meridian just lateral to the bone. So I can feel my hand fall, the heel of my hand is falling off the bone into the groove right alongside it. Then I'm coming across the dorsal foot and all the way out to the lateral border of the second toe. Let's see how that works. Yeah. Good, Jen. Yes, that looks great, Christina. That's wonderful. You can you can also bring your knees a little further back if it's more comfortable. Yep. And then, yep, bring your hara towards your hands. Now that looks good, Yumi. <laughs> so yeah, you can you can watch Yumi anytime. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> Okay. I'm just also looking at the chat, see if there's anything here. No? So we could practice the rotation too. <laughs> So the bent knee hip rotation. And just seeing where their leg wants to go. Don't force it, seeing what feels to you like a comfortable stretch and exploring their range of motion. And you wanna start smaller and get larger as you feel they have the range. So again, I have a mother and a messenger to them. The, leg, the hand on the leg is the messenger. And then you can support at the ankle and the knee to bring the, uh, the leg down. And on this side of the midline, the same side, And you can palm up, swing meridian. Is okay. And just for now, just come up to the um, 
Now, did you feel like you needed support there? Yeah. Okay, so Bolo was a little bit uncomfortable, so you can bring a knee underneath their knee, or you could use a pillow to support them. You don't wanna leave them hanging there if it's not comfortable. Let me just see how it's going here again. Now we see Yumi with her forearm. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and she's supporting with her, her knee, <laughs> the leg, the leg with the red, white, and blue leg. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so we can also try um, heart and small intestine again, now that you have a setup to practice on. Oh, and, and yeah, take your time. You see Yumi is doing that. That's so nice. She's doing the stretches and the leg. Oh, you really can do it. Oh, it looks like a leg. Yeah. Okay. You want it to stop? Or it just said in progress. No. Okay. In progress. So you can also use a pillow when our partner, just like Yumi was using her leg and I was, we can use a pillow or our leg. So for heart position, Bolo is better off with a pillow than on the mat. You know, if your partner can easily, they want to look at me for a second, if they can easily rest their arm on the mat in this position, that's great. But you always want to take into consideration what their range of motion is. And this is better for Bolo. So for heart. Again, you want to remember just being especially gentle with heart and also with heart always to remember to go in the direction of flow of the meridian pathway. You don't want to go So I'm coming in a straight line from the center of the deepest, softest part of the axilla out to between this epicondyle and the end of the crease, right about there, heart number three. And then to heart seven right here, and then out through between the little finger and ring finger on the palm and out to the end of the heart pathway at the base of the nail on the ring finger side of the little finger.
and we can also work this way. Whatever feels most comfortable for you. And right here, I feel a spot where I sink in a little more. I want to stay there. Bolo is responding. Sam and I can hear. Stark. Yep. And I can feel right here, it's a little congested. It's not as soft. So pay attention to what you feel as you travel along meridians. Never know what your blanket's going to tell you. <laughs> if you're practicing on a blanket. So heart seven is right at the crease at the wrist between the bones on so between the radius and the carpal bones there. And for small intestine, we can actually use the same position. We want to get a little more posterior, and we're traveling in the opposite direction. So I'll trace it for you. It's traveling right more posterior than heart right between the bone and the muscles here and then coming right so one side of my thumb is on the bone and the other side is just alongside it coming down between this epicondyle here and the olecranon and then most posterior portion to the back of the axilla we have a point right here. And this meridian can take a little, this is a young meridian, can take a little more pressure. Okay, let me see how they're doing. Charge for a minute. Oh, you have to recharge? Okay, Sam's running out of battery. <laughs> He's recharging. And still that other cord doesn't work, right? No, this, this one does. But... Good. Christina, how's it going? Going. Okay. And Bree, is it getting any easier? Yeah, it is. It, you know, I think just getting my own body movement the mechanics is, is helpful. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you for trying. <laughs> How's it feeling for your partner, Jen? All right. Are you comfortable in that position? Mm -hmm. Good. 
all is very relaxed. So I think what I'll do, I'll unmute myself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going back here. Okay, so I switched back to um, the computer with my sound since Sam needs to recharge a little. That looks great, Jen. Yeah, it's nice how cats love to watch and relax <laughs> and join the treatment. They just, <laughs> they're, so, they're drawn to it whenever we work, if they're around it. My cat loves to come in my treatment room, but I don't usually let her in. <laughs> she's just in heaven when she's in here, just to be in the space. Yeah, so if you did one side, you can practice on the other side. So I was working on all those left side. Yeah, you can work on your Blankets left side. <laughs> you ready? You feel it? Okay. So Sam is going to come back. Yep. We'll see how how long his he lasts this time. I think I succeeded. So is the, the sounds more on yours? Yes, great, excellent. Yeah, and you can also practice some of the transitions. So if you're transitioning from one side to the other, you can stretch this way. You can also be holding your hands like that. My phone is ringing, hang on. I'm just checking to see if it's one of you. No. <laughs> Back. How's that going? Okay. Do you want to go further? Should I let yeah, you go you lower? Go yeah. Just let your arms relax. Yeah. 
And if we want to do heart and small intestine again, we can put in the pillow. We can also try, let's see, with a knee. Would be another option. We're coming to long. So we can even do it in a different order. Large intestine, different positions for different meridians. Stomach. And, oh, you lost it. Yeah. Good. Sounded like you. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, great. It's close. <laughs> we'll see how long it lasts. So, yeah, one hand, mother hand in the hara, leaning in with my hara seeing how far his leg wants to go and checking his range of motion at the same time. And you can go in both directions. Support their leg if you feel that they need it. And we're going just up to the hip for now. Practice this transition as well. We can um, transition from one leg to the other. You can also rock them up and down and jiggle each leg separately and both together. You can lean back. You can stretch yourself. Holding the heels, you can rock them. And when you're ready to close, you can bring one hand over the other. Connect with their breathing and then let them lift you out of their hara. And they inhale. Oh. <laughs> Just maybe you stopped breathing for a second. And they inhale, yep. 
Sometimes he has sleep apnea. So when they breathe in, they lift you. And so let them lift you and don't go back in. Let them fall away from your hands slowly in several breaths. That way they end the session and thank them. Your pillows and your blankets as well for letting you practice. So all of our practice people, all of Jen's partner, Ambria's dad, I don't know if he's still there. <laughs> all right. Okay. How do you feel? Okay. Well, we got very relaxed. He was asleep a little bit there. How did it go for you guys? I see Jen. Oh yeah, hang on. I'm gonna go back on the computer for audio. Great. All right, so that was our first time having a practice session for everyone. Was that helpful? Great. Very helpful. All right, excellent. So yeah, we can definitely do more of that next time. Next time we're gonna do um, bladder and kidney meridians. So we'll do the, the back of the body, which will be wonderful, water element. So you go from um, stomach and spleen, I'm sorry, from heart and small intestine into bladder and then kidney. Yeah. So you can feel free to look over, you know, those meridians and practice between now and Friday if you have a chance. You can practice what you've already done and then just at least get familiar with what's coming up. Yeah. Anybody have any questions before we close? Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Christina. Sorry? Yes, we will do heart constrictor and triple heater class number five. Okay. Yep. Anything else? Just checking the chat. I don't see anything there. Okay. So we could do a closing meditation. Um, I didn't, I didn't prepare the incense today, but we can do it without it. So just get yourself comfortable. Oh, I think I need my glasses. Yeah, make sure you're in a nice, comfortable position. Breathe, inhaling fully and exhaling fully. And I wanna thank the infinite power of the universe present in every cell of our bodies and in everything surrounding us. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this day. Thank, thank you for this opportunity to practice.
Let the energy flow wherever it needs to go for the greatest good. Our will is one. Yeah, thank you all. Oh, Eva. Good to hey, see you. hey, good to see you. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we'll be back on Friday, the 11th. What a be beautiful lecture. I was listening and uh, I just, I feel pure love when I'm listening to you, Wendy. Right. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. It's nice to hear your voice and see your face. <laughs> oh, likewise. Yeah. So everyone, let me remind you about uh, Global Chefs Virtual Gatherings every Saturday. We have excellent um, guests that Kamiko invites. And this Saturday, we will have Suzanne Yates. Is that how you pronounce her name? And it will be about extraordinary vessels and women's health. And Suzanne is, uh, she um, takes care of women through pregnancy and birth, and she helps them with sheds a touch. So it will be very interesting lecture for women. She will also have other th tips, not only for uh, pregnancy, <laughs> but I think uh, we all, uh, will have something to learn from Suzanne. If you are not able to participate, uh, you just check out our YouTube channel, Five Flights Center of Shiatsu Studies. This is how we are called. Please subscribe, uh, like, and comment. And also you can join our uh, affiliate program at the Five Flights and you can find everything on fiveflightcenter.com. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, and I remember also, I wanted to let you know that um, Kumiko does uh, the Makoho. And if you're interested in following along with the Makoho li live on Zoom. Um, well, I think we suspended that right now. Yeah, for now, but, for now. but say yeah. they could you can get in touch with her directly. Yeah, for that. If you're interested. Okay. And also um, June 13th, uh, first international global Shiatsu Day is coming yes. up. So we yeah. are going viral. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Very excited about that. Yeah. It's important. Oh, and also, I don't know. I you, I don't. I don't think you guys, uh, Christina, Jennifer, and Bree, you did not participate in global uh, gatherings. So let me uh, share with you news from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Kumiko's longtime um, uh, client, uh, Giselle Bunshen, uh, gave us office official uh, referral. And let me just tell you who Giselle Bunshin is. She's a supermodel. And uh, in 2014, she was among, she was the first uh, supermodel in the world. <laughs> She's a United Nations Peace Ambassador. She's a philanthropist. She advocates uh, yoga and mindfulness. And in 2016, she was among 100 uh, most powerful women in the world. She has 17 million followers on Instagram. And she has husband who's Tom Brady. <laughs> So we have really huge support from this wonderful woman who's a role model for many people around the world. 
and I'm letting you know to empower you <laughs> because we are really doing beautiful things and we are happy to have you with us on board. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Right. Great job, everybody, today. It was beautiful. It was nice to see you all working. And I hope next time everyone can have somebody. But if you can't, don't worry. You have your pillows and your blankets. And you can do it. Uh, it still works. I practiced today before <laughs> I was showing, showing Sam before <laughs> on the break. You know, you can, you can really get a feel and work with your own body mechanics, you know. All right, so see you Friday. Take care until then. I hope everybody has Thank a wonderful you, Wendy. Thursday, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Wendy. Thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, Yumi, nice to see you. Bye, yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.